This isn't how we usually do it, but hey, films rarely fail so spectacularly. Going to the ball could get dangerous. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and in this installment of Versus, we're pitting cats against Doolittle to see which of these two animal themed movies, released less than a month apart in late 2019 and early 2020, failed more spectacularly. So grab some popcorn and buckle up. This one's gonna be both entertaining and messy. Round one Cast. Now it is time to make the choice. For his adaptation of the hit Broadway musical, director Tom Hooper managed to line up a stellar cast of talented actors, including Dame Judi Dench, Sir Ian McKellen, Idris Elba, Ray Winston, and Jennifer Hudson, alongside proven comic stars like James Corden and Rebel Wilson. All things considered, this film was in a great position to succeed, but for whatever reason, most of the aforementioned stars are relegated to relatively supporting or bit parts. And while musical numbers by skilled vocalists Jason Derulo and Taylor Swift are welcome, the known quantities in the cast as a whole just feel seriously under and misused. I judge a cat by its soul. I've got plenty of soul. Doolittle has the good sense to put its biggest money-making star front and center. There are few male leads more bankable than Robert Downey Jr., and as the Sherlock Holmes films proved, RDJ's charms can be applied to more iconic characters than just Tony Stark. Not only that, but in this film, he is supporting a truly awe-inspiring list of big-name stars, including Tom Holland, Emma Thompson, Ray Fiennes, Rami Malek, Octavia Spencer, Selena Gomez, John Cena, and more. The problem? They're only offering up their speaking voices to the animal characters. Dub dub forceps, please. Here you go. That's a piece of celery. Forcep? Carrot, that is. Forcep. No, still celery. Never mind, I'll get it myself. In terms of live action co stars, RDJ is joined by the great Michael Sheen and Antonio Banderas. But they're not exactly faces that young kids, the target demographic, are clamoring to see. Both of these films were armed with a much better roster of performers than most, but ultimately, Cats squandered far more talent. And so, it takes the first round. Loser, Cats. Right, well that's not going to work, is it? <laughs> that's what I say to you. <laughs> round two, performances. I'll dance with these beautiful Even the most gifted performers can turn in a stinker from time to time when they don't genuinely connect with the material. Cats is a decidedly mixed bag in this regard. For example, the aforementioned James Corden and Rebel Wilson's turns are meant as comedic relief, but there's a serious cringe factor to their feline antics. Taylor Swift, on the other hand, actually does a great job, however brief her screen time, as the mischievous bombalarina. McKellen and Dench, for their parts, are as reliable as ever, even armed with silly material. But the real saving grace of this film is Jennifer Hudson's Grizabella, who genuinely makes you feel for her plight. We've seen Robert Downey Jr. deliver some stellar performances over the years. The guy knows how to work the camera. But the typically reliable thespian, so awesome in iconic roles as Charlie Chaplin, Sherlock Holmes, and Tony Stark, never seems to truly find his footing as the titular Dr. John Doolittle. Attempting to play a character that's aimed at children, he seems to be at a loss for an age-appropriate personality. And so, instead, he's just sort of bland. Somehow, we just belong together. Don't get us wrong, it's still RDJ, so it's totally watchable, but we know how much better he can do. For a guy who can talk to animals, Doolittle feels shockingly two-dimensional, and unfortunately, the same goes for his human co-stars. Nobody told me there'd be a dragon! <laughs> I'm too beautiful to die. Thanks in no small part to the colossal efforts of Jennifer Hudson, Cats actually has some scenes worth watching. Unfortunately, the same cannot really be said for Doolittle. You're just not gonna care about these characters. And so Doolittle takes it to tie the score up. Loser, Doolittle. Hello, buddy. Hello, lunch. Round three. Plot. The most deserving cat will be reborn into another life. Over the years, many a convoluted, mind-bending film has left audiences debating its true meaning. But hey, Primer, Donnie Darko, Mulholland Drive, The Holy Mountain, they ain't got nothing on cats. Okay, that might be a stretch, but still. Unlike the aforementioned films, Cats doesn't ask any big questions or toy with complex themes. At least, not that we could catch. We can be who we've always dreamed of being. What's to be Anything is possible. Instead, it barrels along from one song to the next, and due to the almost complete absence of traditional dialogue, 
there's very little in terms of exposition. It all centers around a musical competition where cats compete for a chance at a new life. But you'll need to remind yourself of all that throughout the film. So the whole show is made up? We just do some poppers and say whatever comes to mind. Jellicle, Griddlebone, Mungo Jerry, Jimmy McCracklins. We get what the plot is to Doolittle because, well, the one thing that's most certainly not lacking in the movie is exposition. We have no choice but to embark on this perilous journey. But just because you spell something out doesn't make it any less tangential, clumsy, or unnatural. While the few positive reviews of this film did praise its fidelity to the source material, simply honoring the original does not a good adaptation make. Some might also say that you shouldn't hold a children's film to very high narrative standards, but you know what? Even young children deserve something more substantial than this paper-thin plot. Jip, you need to stay behind and guard the queen. Stand back, everyone, while I secure the perimeter. Which is probably why they didn't even bother alluding to a plot in the trailer. So that was a pretty scathing indictment of Doolittle's plot. But you know what? At least it had one. And so, by this meager margin, it is superior to Cats. The singing kitties lose another one of those nine lives. Loser, Cats. Spotlight! And a drum roll, please. Milk! Round four, sheer awfulness. Let's just say it, Cats is bad. Like, really bad. Even if you, the viewer, don't have the slightest grasp on how to make a film or write a script, you can tell that something's gone seriously amiss with this movie. We all can't help but wonder how many nights Tom Hooper and cinematographer Christopher Ross lay awake staring at the ceiling, agonizing over how to salvage this visually frenetic nightmare. Heck, even an alien armed with a one-sentence definition of narrative cinema would likely consider this film to have missed the mark. Artistically, we feed off of each other. Put those things together and I believe that you have magic. In short, it is a cinematic failure of the most spectacular variety. From the plot, to the special effects, to the pacing, it's unlike anything you've ever seen before. And not in a good way. Are you going to try for a different life? Doolittle is, in and of itself as a piece of entertainment, a relatively harmless creation. Kids won't walk away any worse for having seen it, they just won't have learned anything from it either. Or necessarily cared for it much. But from a filmmaking perspective, it's a real Frankenstein's monster. It's alive! It's alive! It takes a big name actor, a massive budget, a list of stars a mile long, a beloved children's character, and tries to use them as the glue to hold together a colossally messy pastiche of adventure movie cliches and tropes. It simply doesn't work. Despite everything that gets crammed into its hour and 31 minute runtime, it is a bore. Approached from any angle, it's really tough to enjoy. Ah, that's gotta hurt. If you're gonna mess up, at least do it in an interesting way. Cats will go down as one of the most bizarre big budget failures in the history of the film medium. It's likely to become an ironic cult classic like The Room. <laughs> You must be kidding, aren't you? Doolittle, on the other hand, simply fails by every conventional criteria by which movies are judged. And since it fails to ascend to the heights of being so bad it's good, it wins or loses this round. Loser, Doolittle. I have nipples, Greg. Can you milk me? Okay. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Round five, CGI. Tonight is a magical night where I choose the cat that deserves a new life. In modern gaming, it's pretty much standard operating procedure for developers to release updates to fix issues with the game post-release. But such a practice is all but unheard of in film. That is, until now. There were apparently such major issues with the CGI in Cats that the studio literally sent out an updated version with, quote, some improved visual effects. Whatever they did, well, it wasn't enough. What's your name? Cat got your tongue? The garish computer-generated environments are extremely distracting, as is the inconsistency in how the various actors are turned into cats. Some look like anthropomorphic felines, others just seem to have their human faces, skin and all, pasted on a cat-like body. It's really confusing and pretty much the definition of the uncanny valley. Follow me home If you dare to 
And sadly, it seems that with advances in computer technology, anything that can be generated in post-production will be generated in post-production. Doolittle's special effects are not particularly awful. They can't hold a candle to save The Lion King or War for the Planet of the Apes, but they're, you know, fine. The thing is, there's just so much. And the end result is that rather than inspiring a sense of wonder, it all just leaves you feeling hollow. As CGI animals navigate CGI environments populated by just a couple of flesh and blood actors, it begins to feel like an animated film, especially when the action picks up. Uninspired and overabundant as Doolittle's CGI might be, at least it won't haunt you for years to come. After you've seen Cats, on the other hand, well, all bets are off. How Cats got made a full decade after Avatar and still looks this bad, we'll never know. But with those effects, it more than earns the round and the competition. Loser, Cats. I love it. Did we pick the right disaster of a film? Be sure to debate it in the comments, and of course, don't forget to subscribe to Watch Mojo for more entertaining versus battles. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.